Well, hey, welcome to Glass House to Go. And uh, today we're going to be looking at a section of scripture out of Galatians chapter 6. And this is a really important uh, verse, I think, for everyone to know. Uh, but just a quick fill, on, fill in of, of where we are and what we're doing. Uh, as you can see uh, here, uh, we're actually in a room that's being renovated. And uh, so I want to just share the thought today. This is the title of today's thought is Enduring the Dory. Enduring the Dory. And, and what I mean by that is that renovation, uh, one of the rules of renovation, if you've never been involved in a renovation or you've never been uh, involved in some project uh, like this where something has to get worse so it can get better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. That's the cardinal rule, so to speak, of renovation. And scripturally speaking, God is renovating our life. That, that is what it is to be a Christian. It's to be a project. It's to be under uh, new management. It's to be a person who's going from the old you to the new you. And this is probably one of those concepts that I think a lot of people miss uh, in, the, in the project there, which is that there's a dory. And, and we have to be enduring the dory. We have to know what it is to endure uh, that process because again, sometimes things get worse before they get better. And I think this is really the reason so few people will undergo uh, the actual process of what God wants to do in our life because we've become a society that kind of glorifies the before and after picture. You know what I'm talking about? Like it, let's say somebody's involved in weight loss or whatever and they have a before and you go, okay, there's before and, and there's an after and you go, wow, what a transformation and what a renovation. But what people tend to fast forward through or ignore completely is the during. There's a during. There's something that goes on between the <clears throat> two points, the before and the after. And so uh, what you see in Galatians 6, verse 9, this is the passage I want to share with you. It said, let us, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now again, the point of Glass House to Go is to do something a tiny bit different. Uh, basically, what we're doing is taking some of the church service things that we do and taking them on the road, taking them to different spots, doing uh, some unique locations. And this location happens to be our bathroom. Now, here's the funny thing about it is that our bathroom looked pretty good to most people before we started the renovation. So what's the reason for the renovation? Well, first of all, let me tell you, we got a fixer upper. Now we're really excited that we did, but this was a house that actually someone went into foreclosure almost before us. And so they left it uh, untended for almost 18 months. And so there were a lot of things that we knew going in, hey, <laughs> this is gonna need some attention. This is gonna need some renovation. And if I could make one first point, spiritually speaking, in our lives, uh, Jesus got into our life knowing full well it was a fixer-upper, all right? Uh, we have a billboard that I've seen around town that says, we buy ugly houses, right? And, and the truth is, God buys ugly lives. He, he buys things that he knows perfectly well uh, need a little work. And so when you start with that understanding, hey, uh, it might have looked pretty good about a month ago, but the truth was there were plumbing problems. The truth is there were drainage problems. There were some things going on that left unchecked would have caused significant structural damage to the house down the road. And so we actually had to make it look worse on the way to getting better. And, and so again, many people would love to show you the before after picture, but uh, I got Len's permission to actually broadcast here and show the during picture. Um, so we're enduring the during, and we're really grateful to the people who are helping with this project. But, you know, they, they have lives that they have to go back to. And so bottom line is the stuff kind of sits here, you know, and, 
And so I'm here on the floor and there's, there's grout around, there's no tile up, there's things that are in progress. And frankly, uh, many people would never show you this side of their life. See, this is again, this passage, let me read it again. This is what he said, let us not grow weary. And I think the us-ness of this passage should not be ignored. What's that mean? This is the human condition, folks. And I think, again, so often we will look at the before or the after with somebody and go, oh, look at their lives, look at their marriage, look at their relationships, look at their family, look at everything in their uh, existence is so wonderful because we tend to be people who only show the after if after it's all over, after some improvement has been made. But the during, oh, well, you know, those pictures, we don't post those. Those pictures, we don't share those. Those thoughts uh, are something kept to ourselves. And again, I'm not saying we should go around airing our worst days and our worst thoughts or our worst progress along the way. But, you know, the honesty, the transparency of life to actually say we don't just know it, that there's a process to all this, we show it. I think if we were to get real with each other at times and just say, hey, <laughs> in progress, um, I, I think maybe actually my God's really working on my patience. Um, and in the process, I think I'm getting more impatient on the way to getting more patient. Why? Because God keeps sending me these things that make me lose my patience. But maybe what I'm really doing is losing my impatience. Uh, but again, it's enduring the during. It's the us of this passage. It doesn't say them. This is something for other people. This is something for everyone. So even the Apostle Paul knew what it was to grow weary in the work of renovation, in the work of transformation, in his own life and in the lives of others. So he said, don't, don't, uh, we should not grow weary while doing good. See, this is interesting. You can actually be doing a great thing and still get tired. Um, you can you can be doing a, a positive thing and still have that just whew, worn out. And again, it's the realization that it gets worse before it gets better. The demolition phase of a of a renovation is actually a little bit of fun because you get to tear things up, you know, and take out your aggressions on stuff. But then all of a sudden, you look around, and you go, "Man, it looks a lot worse." And, and I was hoping, the whole reason I undertook this project is I was hoping it would get better quicker than this. Uh, but again, it, it has to go down through that valley, through that valley on the way to something else. So if you think of it as a little hill, uh, it was here, this is the before, you gotta go sometimes through the valley to get to the next elevation of life. And so when you think about that, um, he uses the analogy of farming in this passage. And not everyone here is a farmer, but when you think about this, we can understand it on some level. This is what he's saying. You're doing something good, but in due season, what does this mean? This means you're going to plant things. You're gonna tear up the ground. You're gonna do a lot of work and you might look out and go, man, it actually looks worse after you did all that than it did before you broke it up and mowed it down and messed it up. But he says, there's a due season. What does that mean? Well, not just the next day. There's work, there's watering, there's all of this, but all of a sudden things start to, in another season, sprout. And I, over the years, have seen this is one of the most difficult portions of the spiritual life. As somebody is doing good, maybe they're changing their habits, changing their ways, changing so much about their life, but there's not an immediate uptick. There's not a, an immediate uh, improvement. Sometimes, in fact, some of their relationships get worse. All of a sudden, people are, ah, oh, this is your latest thing, or, you know, it's a phase, it'll change, all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, you're losing the friends, friends, quote unquote, that you used to have, and you really haven't made new connections with somebody. And, and you're like, man, I think my life is worse after I made a commitment to Christ. Or my life is, is worse off than it was before I decided I wanted to get better and do better. And, and yet this passage says, hey, this is part of the process. You have to learn to be enduring the during, not just looking at the, the before and, and the after and thinking that those are, are shortcutted and that they just happen overnight. In fact, again, I think it would be doing a great process if you're a mature believer. Let's say that you're somebody who's known the Bible and known God for a long time in your life. You know what? 
Find somebody who maybe hasn't known that path as long and, and be honest with them and say, hey, there's a during. The, the truth is you're, you're maybe seeing after 20, 25, 30 years of the work that God's done in our life, this is the post renovation, but I'm still going through renovation. But so often people will get discouraged in that because they look at the after pictures and they look at the work that God's done in someone else and say, well, it didn't happen for me. But what we realize is it didn't happen for them overnight. Even the Apostle Paul many times had to go through renovation projects. There's a whole time when he was three years in the desert being instructed by God because I think he was being uninstructed on all the things he had wrong in his life. He had to unlearn stuff. See, I think about some of the other ways this this idea shows up in scripture. God is so faithful to give us so many analogies that even if we say, I don't understand farming, well, maybe we understand exercise and, and running. There's a, there's a whole section um, in the book of Hebrews that talks about running a race and, and it appears elsewhere in scripture where he basically says, hey, the starting line is, is exciting. Everyone's like there and cheering and you know the finish line, oh, we all talk about that. But he says in between that, the way to get to the finish line is actually to run a race. And, you know, enduring the during, uh, if you've ever tuned into one of those sports shows, what they love to do is actually fast forward through most of the race. You know, they kind of show the, the gun going off at the beginning, you know, and everyone's excited and nobody's sweaty yet. And it's just amazing. And then they love to show the finish line where there's all the drama and excitement and stuff. But rarely do they check in just mile after mile after mile after mile of enduring the during. And so when you think about that, this is the analogy used there. Farming, running. Hey, the, the bottom line is sometimes it has to get worse for it to get better. I think also about pruning. We do some of this around our properties at various times, whether it's you know a business we uh, work with or whatever else, and you end up ha having to prune things. And if you don't know what you're doing with pruning or you don't know what they're doing, you'll watch someone pruning a plant and you're like, no, because the plant actually looked okay before and then the pruner comes in and cuts it all back and you're like, you killed it. It's dead. <laughs> it was bad before, but it's worse now. And then a season comes, a due season like it talked about here in Galatians 6. And in that due season, that's when all of a sudden you see fruit coming off it or flowers coming off that plant that never did before. And you're like, how did that happen? Well, again, when you hit a plateau in life and we've all done it, we've all hit that thing where you're like, well, I guess this is as good as it gets. You know what? Oftentimes what God will do is not add something to our life, but prune something from our life. And you go, I don't like the pruning process. I don't like the renovation process. You know, it, it, it looks worse now than it did before. You know? You know, but, but God maybe will take something out of our life to put something more into our life. And I've thought about how many times that has happened in the lives that I've observed and even in my own life. And part of the takeaway from today, if it is the, the now what? What do I do? How do I then live differently after today? Well, part of it is taking courage of the fact that, first of all, this is common experience to everyone. There isn't anyone out there who goes straight from before to after without any process in the middle. Now, they may be honest with you or they may not be honest with you, but there's a during. There's a during. And there's plenty of people who never get to the after because they give up during the during. But what you see is, uh, that's the first takeaway, that you can take courage that it's not just you. It's not just you, it's us. But beyond that, you also see that there is a due season. The season will come, and in fact, that plateau maybe of, of character or whatever that's frustrated you, God may have to take you down a notch to take you up two notches. And don't think that that, that moment in that valley, that time in that valley is a bad thing or that you're being punished because you're horrible. No, in fact, you're being pruned because God sees potential in you and you see those things differently when you understand this process. That's why Paul shared it with us. That's why I'm sharing it with you today. So I look at this and this room is not a discouragement to me. I don't come in here and say, oh, this is terrible. No, I, I say, this is wonderful. This looks so bad because it's gonna look 
so good. It's going to be so much better because it was to the, to the visible, it wasn't that bad. But to the invisible, oh, we knew that there were some structural things that had to be dealt with. And again, sometimes somebody else will look at your life and go, man, I don't know why you're going through that. And God knows why we're going through that. But the important thing is we're going through that. See, it's enduring the during. The during is not the destination. The during is the process by which God gets you to the place that he wants to take you. And so when I look at that, I can think of the during so much differently. Again, it's not just grit my teeth and I'm in the during, I hate the during. No, you can actually find joy in the during and say, man, with it looking this bad, it's going to be very, very good. Uh, and, and, the, and the courage it takes to actually take something that's okay, just okay. How's your marriage? It's okay. How are your friendships? They're okay. How, how's, your, how's your work life? It's, it's okay. Um, how's your discipline? It's okay. How's your health? It's, it's okay. To take the okay and say, that's not okay. I'm willing to get worse before I get better. Think about uh, another analogy often used in scripture, again, as the athlete. And athletes, funny enough, they plateau, they plateau too. They may have a higher plateau than some people, but you see somebody who reaches their maximum percentage or they have their best year and then they have another year that's not so great. And you know what oftentimes they'll do is they'll go to a coach. Let's say they... They golf, they'll go to a golfing coach. Let's say they, they play baseball, they'll go to a baseball coach or whatever, and that coach is going to address their stroke, their follow through, the way they actually do what they do. And so there might be somebody who's even reached the professional level, but they plateaued. And they say, uh, well, I guess 60% is as good as I'm ever gonna get. But here's what happens with a like say a, a batting coach, you know what they do? They readdress your grip and everything and the next thing you know, you're actually worse. They're, I've had coaches in different areas tell me, you're going to get worse before you get better. <laughs> the reality is, <laughs> if you were shooting 30% before, with the proper technique, you will be down to 10% until you're up to 50 and 60% again. Why is that? Because you have to get worse before you get better. You have to unlearn before you can learn. And so often, as you see here, you have to do a demolition before you can do a renovation. And so uh, when God comes into our lives, we so often get really excited about the after picture. You'll read a scripture that says, you know, this is the, the place that God is taking you. And you read that and you go, ha, I want that. I want that after picture on my refrigerator. And then the during, it's enduring things where God says, okay, we're going to demolition this. You know, and something goes out of your life and you go, no, that was, my, that was my broken thing, but I at least knew how it worked. And he says, yeah, well, I'm going to have to break that so I can fix all of the things that I need to fix. So it, yeah, it might get worse before it gets better. But knowing that and seeing that means that I don't lose heart. See, losing heart is the worst thing in the middle of this. What if we just said, oh, look, look at this. Oh, what's the point? Well, you know what the point is now? This is actually worse than when we started. There's actually no toilet in there. There's just a hole in the ground. Um, there's like no shower in here. There's no flooring in here. It, things are worse now and if I were to give up now what a mistake that would be right I would look at it and go huh well I guess I just got to live with it no I don't have to live with it what I have to do is live through it I have to get through it and we have to get through it now the the joke the funny thing around our house is if you tuned in last week you know I was actually on the road I was in Miami Florida and I tried to time this in such a way that uh, that my wife could be the, the uh, supervisor of everything and it would be all done uh, by the time I got back. But I guess um, I, the, the during was going to be a little longer than I thought. But I actually was gone for the first part of this. But, but actually, we're doing some painting projects and other things. I even This is my painting shirt. Uh, and, and so I interrupted that work. She's working in the other room. Uh, so I could do church. You know, who can argue with that? 
But but this is it. Not losing heart. You know, it's not grumbling at each other and getting mad at it, but actually encouraging one another and saying, hey, Lynn, great job on this stuff. This is looking great. When I walked in, I actually didn't say, well, why is it so messy? I looked in and said, this is amazing. Look at the progress you're making. Look at the progress we're making. This is amazing. I didn't do anything, but look at it. And now this week, um, again, getting involved hands-on. And so I encourage you to encourage others. Look at people's process. Look at people's progress. And even if somebody has got the courage to demolition a part of their life and say, you know what, I, I had a plateau, I had a facade, I was pretending to be this good, but the truth is, man, I gotta start ripping some stuff out and I gotta really mix everything up. You know what, again, that can be a time where someone's life looks worse than before, but what do they not need? What they don't need is people coming in and going, well, here's what you're supposed to look like and showing them the after picture and saying, this is what it's supposed to be. It's great to come alongside people and endure the during together because there's nothing quite like going through things uh, together and looking around saying, well, we're having fun. You know, we put on some music. We, uh, you know, smear a little paint on each other. We just, we just, goof off some and have some fun during it because the it's not again enduring the during it's actually realizing and embracing that as part of the progress and process that god has and so again when you think about this you watch a, a renovation show if you were to watch a farming show or any of these analogies i've used today you know it's so important to hear this. Let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season, in due season, we shall reap if we don't lose heart. That means if we lose heart, we might not reap and you actually just get the bad part without any of the better part, which doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm looking at things and just saying, you know what, whatever I do, I'm going to be willing to mix things up, mess things up and say, okay, well, uh, no one can be a critic of my life at this stage because you look at it and say, man, I don't like your bathroom. It's not winning any awards, right? But, but no one can look at my life in progress and in process and, and make an accurate description of it other than God who says, we're on our way to this. And again, if you watch those shows, that they love to put it in fast motion, you know, while they're doing all the sanding and hard work and stuff like that, because nobody even wants to sit on the couch and watch someone else enduring the during. We're just like, get to the after, get to the after, get to the after. Uh, but, you know, to do that is to miss the glory of God. <laughs> to do that is to miss the glory of God. And so, again, your takeaway, I better get back to painting before I get... Um, renovated in some other ways. But I just wanted to let you know that, um, you know, we can know it. We can know it here in our heart. But it's so important to show that heart to other people, to realize, hey, when I look at somebody, they're in progress. They're in process. To give myself, first of all, that grace, but to give that grace to other people where he said, let us not do this. We should not do this. Not, you should not do this. This is not a finger pointing saying, you should think this way. This is a finger pointing this way, saying we need to understand this, but we need to know it, but we need to show it. We need to show it that sometimes, again, maybe our kids, maybe our parents, maybe our friends, maybe our coworkers are getting worse in some area. And we can jump quickly to the conclusion that, no, nah, they're getting more worse. I don't even know God's working in their life. And, and the reality is this may be God working in their life like never before where they're getting a little more vulnerable and he's taking things out and, and grinding things through. And you say, well, it looks worse right now. But we have to look at each other and ourselves with the eyes of faith, knowing that God is an amazing, amazing fix it guy. He can come in and fix it. I can fix it. He'll look at something and say, I can fix it. But the question is, can I endure the during? Can I endure the during? Because again, there's a, that same thing that happens with exercise. You know, I, I actually feel worse if I decide, okay, I'm going to do better with exercise. And I go exercise and then I come home and I'm like, oh my God, I feel like four years older than when I just started that exercise routine. But here's the thing, when I go through it, guess what? The soreness, not so much the next day. 
Not so much the next day. Not so much. Pretty soon, man, I'm actually feeling good during the exercise. I'm feeling better during the exercise. And so, again, the during is not uh, a bad phase. In fact, so often it's that thing of getting into that rhythm of realizing, hey, we're going somewhere with this thing. We are doing something with this. And so, glass house to go. I, I hope it, it, it hits you in a spot wherever you are uh, today. I hope you understand a little bit better what Galatians 6, 9 and the sentiments that God shares with us there. It's amazing. Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And so Lord, we thank you so much for the fact that even sitting here on a floor that's not really a floor, uh, we can think on these things in life, wherever we are. It's, it's not just when we're sitting in a, a pew or in a, a church service, but in fact, it's as we're going through our life that you wanna show us these lessons. We go through your word and you show us things, but then as your word goes through us and out through us, uh, we pray that we would take it to go. Uh, truth is not just for inside the church walls, it's to go. And so thanks for tuning in to Glass House to Go. We hope to see you next week and maybe uh, the renovation will be a little bit further or we'll be somewhere else. We never really know. <laughs>